Our dear Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for the opportunity to listen to your word. Dear Lord, I pray that in a very special way, may you speak to each and every one of us in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we be seated, please. Allow me to greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Angalia jirani yangu kwa sura ama kwa macho na mwambie karibu katika nyumba ya Bwana. Today it was a great service that I had in Temple Primary School. Ironically, my last service there. And I had the opportunity to preach God's word and encourage the students. I told them, in life for you to succeed, you must be determined. And I want to tell you, for you to succeed in whatever you do, determination is critical. Yesterday, I also went to two churches. I went to a church called Priyoko. Later, I concluded in a church called Akel. Down there, and I want to tell you, the valley is steep. But it took determination for me to arrive at the destination. The people who are determined in life are the people who succeed. May you be determined always every Sunday to attend church service here. Determination favors. Determination comes and gives us success. As I was in Chepkapechak later in the day, I met a young man who studies at Kokoch, grade 6. That man told me, the young man told me that every day at 6.30, he runs to school at Kopoch, in Kopoch. The school is at Kopoch. He runs all the way from Munarer to Kopoch. Every day. And the young man was determined to succeed in the examination. One important lesson I learned is determination is everything. When you go to school, be determined to do the best. Be determined to get an A in mathematics, all subjects, and determination is everything. May you always be determined. Number two, be disciplined. In attending church service, also in coming right on time. A story is told of an interview. And in this interview, the ladies came, you know, the slave queens. I know there is none here. Walikuja, wame, they came, wameshika their certificates for Makucha, and they were behaving <laughs> like this. And the young men, walikuwa mevaa alongi musumringoti, they had sagged their trousers, holding their papers, all were invited for interview of a great position. That they entered the place where they were interviewed, running, water was running from the tap. There were also pieces of paper that were scattered everywhere. The young ladies who did not have discipline were kasema, hii ni kazi ya mwingine. This one, inaonekana msee mwenye amefanya hapa amezuba. Changa mke. Inaonekana mwenye amefanya hapa anaitaji kuchanga muka. And they left, went and sat at the benches. The young men came. But one young, one young man came last. He was late, running, sweating profusely. And as he arrived at the place of interview, he saw that water was running. He decided to close the water taps. And he saw pieces of paper here and there. He decided to pick them and place them in the right place, the dustbin. And the interviewers were having a CCTV camera, seeing everyone and the attitude and what they were doing. And they invited all to the interview room and told them, the interview is over. Some complained, no, how is it over before starting? We have done with our papers. 
The people say, we have checked your papers and we have found all the papers were okay. We just wanted someone with discipline to be employed. They say the person who picked the papers and the person who closed the tap because we did it deliberately has been employed. It is my prayer that you will be disciplined. Number three, be dedicated. May you be dedicated in serving God. Lastly, may you be diligent. Not only diligent, may you be devoted to God's word. Our second reading today was read for us exceptionally well by our brother Tarus from the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 14 beginning to read from verse 1 to 14. Dr. Luke was a physician, a Gentile, a man who had exceptionally good Greek. He wrote this gospel to show the position of the poor Many things are explored in Luke. Among them, the place of the Holy Spirit, the place of women in ministry. And he writes a parable. Tells us a story. Jesus was invited to the Pharisees' house. There was a sick man, swollen. And some people thought he was sick because of sin. He was suffering. He, his body parts were swollen. And it may have been a terminal illness. It was Sabbath. Maybe he was placed there to tempt Jesus. And I want to say, but in his life and in ministry, in life there are things that people don't understand. God's way and man's ways are very different. The way we approach things and the way God approaches things is different. The man was placed there. Jesus asked the Pharisees and the people who are tax collectors. He said, who among you, when he has a donkey during Sabbath, will he not untie it or give it water? about healing a person? He said, be healed. And the person was healed. Then in the banquet he says, when you are invited, sit at the low positions so that you may be lifted to higher places and to better places. He said, when you invite people, invite the people who are not able, the poor, the lame, who cannot repay you back. Today, I want to preach a message entitled, We Need to Understand Things in the Eyes of God. Number one, when you understand things in the eyes of God, you will not stop serving. Jesus did not look at the rules and regulations. Jesus did not observe and seek social acceptance. He knew that he was called to serve. Though it was a Sabbath, but he knew this person needed to be healed. He told him, wake up and be healed. Sometimes we bother so much about what people think, but we forget to serve. May God enable us to serve in the church. I want to appreciate the use of this service. I came to this church, there was no English service. I thank God for the youths who planned to visit me. One year, or more than a year ago, they came to my home, and that is the place where I told them we need to begin the service. Some of you did not know how to lead the service. You did not care. People will laugh at you, but you accepted to serve. Just as our Lord Jesus Christ healed even if, when he knew that he was going to be criticized. Do your duty. Serve diligently and never stop serving because of people's opinion. May the Lord enable us to serve always. Don't stop serving. I have served in Nassau. I've remembered that I went to Mtebul primary virtually every Sunday. Sometimes 
times maybe I did not have the fear. But I knew I was called to serve. And always have been there. The end of something is better than the beginning. Today I was glad as we took the selfie with eight girls who are left in school. And I told them, continue serving. Even here in Temple, continue serving. It is service. And it is my prayer that you will continue serving. In school at, and at home. Some people are very humble at home. In school, they are terrible people. And some people do the opposite. In school, in, at home here, they are very humble. In school, when you ask if they are in CU, they are not serving. Number two, do not seek your honor, but seek to honor God. It is my prayer that whenever you are invited, take the low position. People suffer in this world because of two problems. Some people exalt their importance and some people do not know their importance. I want to tell you, in life, be humble. There was a pastor that we studied with and one day I wanted to change from KHPC, which was an NGC college to an Anglican college. One student asked me, do you really want to change your college? I said, yes. But I told him, he asked me, who have you asked to pray with you? I said, I've asked one lady by the name of Joyce to pray with me, and also a reverend by the name of Reverend Mutai to pray with me. Then he said, you do not know who you have asked. Joyce, the lady when you have nyuele, like Joan today. <laughs> What about Reverend Mutai? I said, I'm going to become a partner. I'm going to become a partner. I'm going to become a partner. He only eats and sleeps. Then I asked him, Who could I have asked? He said, Me. I am the person able to pray. Do you know that man did not last for eight, six months in ministry? He was caught in scandals. He cheated with people there. He conned people their money. And later, he was completely banned from ministry. I want to say be humble. When you are doing well in school, be humble. Sit at the lower parts. And later, you will be exalted. May you always be humble. If you have read from three, no problem has come on your side. Or from four, do not be boastful. Be humble. Don't seek to exalt yourself. Always be humble. May the Lord humble us every day. The Pharisees, they like the top seats, but later they were put down. But when you go to the lowest, God will exalt you. Be humble in church. Number three, remember that it is not by merit, but by grace. Remember that person was placed at the door. He was at the door, terminally ill. And the Pharisees thought he did not deserve to be healed. They forgot, and even themselves, they did not deserve. But I want to tell you, remember that it is not by merit. Don't seek merit. Seek God's grace. Jesus, by grace, healed him on Sabbath. It is by grace that we are saved. Yesterday, I went to preach at um, Chepka Pechak. I met a lady from St. Cecilia Girls High School. And it reminded me of a very whole, old story. When I was in Form 3, we stoned the bus of St. Cecilia. Me with my friends. And here I am preaching to a girl who studies at St. Cecilia. Here I am a priest from a stone throw to a priest. Not by merit, but by grace. As you come to church, it is by grace. We are saved by grace. We will go to heaven by grace. And we will be changed by grace. There is a song that they used to sing, Oh, when the, oh, when the, oh, when the, 
Or when the saints go marching in. Oh Lord, I want to, to be, be among the number. number. By grace, not merit. Lastly, don't solicit favors. Udumu rosaf na ukimaliza ondoka. The people are inviting people expecting favors. Jesus told them, don't seek favors. Do it. Invite the lame, the weak. People will not reciprocate. In this world, people do things expecting something in return. But I pray that sometimes as you serve here, nobody will notice you as you sweep the church. Nobody will see you as you lead the service. But I want to tell you, God in heaven will bless you and reward you. Today, I want you to understand. Understand that don't stop serving. Number two, understand. Humility is everything. Don't seek your own. Understand that it is not by merit, but it is by grace. Understand we don't do things to seek favor, but we do to serve. And the Lord will richly bless you. As you study, may the Lord be with you. As you go back to school, I'm left with three sermons in this service. Today, on third, 10th and 17th. After 17th, there will be a new preacher. But I thank God for the opportunity to preach to you. You have been wonderful members of English service. You have supported my ministry. May the Lord richly bless you. And may he be with you in all that you do. Amen. Let's all stand and let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you because you have taught us to understand and to understand that we should always serve you. We should always be humble. We should always seek grace and not merit. Dear Lord, I pray, enable us to understand that we do things willingly, graciously, not expecting men. Bless members of this English service. Meet with all their needs, open doors and opportunities, and may they lack nothing. We honor you and we bless you because you are a great God. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.